Now I want you to begin to take authority in one minute. As simple as what I'm saying is I'm releasing my faith with you that every speakings of every altar that is not of the Christ in the name of Jesus be silenced by the blood. Go ahead. Be silenced by the blood. Be silenced by the blood. Go ahead. Pray. Pray. Don't trivialize the simplicity of spiritual intelligence. Pray. Every ill speakings powered by demonic altars advocating defeat, advocating delays, advocating untimely death, advocating poverty, advocating closed doors by the blood of the eternal covenant. I come against you. I dismantle those altars. Someone pray. I come against you. I dismantle those altars by the blood of the eternal covenant. I come against you. I dismantle those altars. Shaba leka parata prakatos katebe leka pa. Attracting tragedies to my life. Attracting wicked men to my life. From one destruction to another. From one trouble to another. Prate leka emparatos kofreke paratos kefriata katabrosi getesh. In Jesus' name we pray. So in one minute as a global family, I'd like us to pray. Father, a fresh encounter. Rest upon your people. Breathe upon your people. Rest upon your people. Rest upon your people. Breathe upon your people. Let your word prevail over the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus, set the captives free. Let yokes be broken. Let destinies be reordered by the Spirit. Let the gospel come with clarity, with precision. Let every dry bone become an exceeding great army. Set men on fire. May they encounter genuine apostolic fire. Pray for all those who are traveling around the world. In the name of Jesus, we speak to the air, we speak to the road, we speak to the sea. For their sake, we declare safety. For their sake, we prophesy safety. That it will be an unforgettable encounter in the presence of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God open your eyes. The Bible says, and David, as a cure to the plague, he built an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague stayed from Israel. What is an altar? What is an altar? Let's recap on a few definitions very quickly. An altar is a place a platform or a system a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a place an altar is a platform an altar is a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds on legal grounds i'm reminded of luke chapter 1 i think from verse 10 to 11 luke chapter 1 10 and verse 11 luke 1 the bible says the whole multitude of the people were praying without outside at the time of incense verse 11 there appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. The angel came and he was standing at the right side of the altar. There was a basis for the angel to visit. Are we together now? 
Now, there are deeper explanations, but I'm cutting a lot of things because I want us to quickly get to the business of what we need to deal with tonight. But it's important for you to know that when we talk about the word altar, don't allow the word to just create a lot of complications. It means a place. It means a platform. It also means a system where the realm of the spirit and the physical realm make contact on legal or legitimate basis now as you know man was created by god as spirit are we together and that spirit contains solical faculties of will emotions and intellect and that spirit with the soul is resident within a body just like you'll be learning altars have a voice and their voices give instructions and the realm of the spirit obeys their instructions to the latter if they say destroy that's the instruction that will happen until someone else says restore if they say create setback among all the men even if it's after hundred years that is the result that is the instruction that will be obeyed altars have voices and the realm of the spirit once it is legitimate it will obey it someone came tonight and as i'm teaching there's an anger rising in your spirit because this negotiation table you have to join today and say no way it comes to an end this evil speakings against my destiny evil speakings against my family in spite of the fact that i am saved i am not yet walking in the experience of liberty evil or demonic altars you find the presence of these altars in lives in families in communities do you know the reason why like you'll be learning we have invented a name for the consistency of obedience to the instructions that altars bring. We call them patterns. Patterns is an instruction that the same outcome must manifest in the life of people within a predefined family, a predefined region. That is why it doesn't matter whether one person is in America and another person is in Russia. It's the same experience they will have because it's an instruction coming from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Evil altars. Demonic altars. Number two, we have what we call righteous or godly altars this is the second category of altars righteous or godly altars someone watching online you need to ask someone around your house to come and sit down and listen because this is an answer to the many tragic situations happening around many families godly or righteous altar like the negative side it is also a system of authorization that is set up, watch this, to allow the operations of the Holy Spirit, the operation of angelic forces, the operations of the Word of God to work profitably for that individual or that family. A righteous or godly altar is a system of authorization, a system of cooperation set up that allows the Holy Spirit that allows the angelic realm or angelic beings that allows the word of God to work profitably for an individual the Bible shows us clearly that there are these two kinds of altars Judges chapter 6 please 25 and 26 and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him Koinonia follow carefully take thy father's young bullock this is Gideon and even the second bullock of seven years old he says and throw down the altar of Baal did you read that in your Bible there is such a thing called the altar of Baal that altar was funding something that was happening in the life of God's people and oppressing the people are we together now he says that who built it your father read it there 
that Gideon's father sincerely maybe builds that altar and most likely perhaps maybe the person that was even gone already and yet the altar was still speaking there were people who were profiting because of this altar God himself said it's called the altar of Baal he says cut it down by the grove that is in it and then when you are done he says now build an altar unto the Lord don't leave it there two kinds of altar because in any case if you want things to change you don't just tear down you also build up now you understand what he told Jeremiah that I have set you over kingdoms and I have given you power to tear down to uproot and then to rebuild let's finish that scripture he says build an altar unto the Lord upon the top of this rock in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a bond offering with the wood of the groove and then which you cut down and so on and so forth so we see here that there are demonic altars and there are godly altars of righteousness this is very powerful how do you know that an altar is functioning in a life i will tell you how do i know what kind of altar is at work or is powering the results in my life you can know the presence of an altar in any life by the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen whether positively or negatively the consistency of patterns that happen widespread poverty widespread prosperity widespread increase widespread defeat widespread open doors everybody in the family 10 children one is in south africa one is in nigeria one is in america and all of them are mysteriously prospering of course doing their due diligence but that there is a mysterious force backing them consistency of patterns and occurrences please let me your attention there are various kinds of occurrences that believers can use to test the presence of altars and to test what kind of altar is speaking in your life hallelujah i think it was when i was doing let them have dominion or so i thought about a few things that can can follow people there are families their own issue is mysterious occurrence of sicknesses bodily infirmity to the point that medicine has agreed today that you literally there is through genetics there can be transference of problems is that true a doctor can look at you and say high blood pressure do you have a case of this in your family you say yes so yes my father died of high blood pressure my grandfather died of high blood pressure or my grandfather died of prostate my father died of prostate and they say ah you're a young man that means you need to begin to manage this let me tell you the truth once you see consistency of occurrence is beyond willpower there is an altar there is an altar how about those who never have longevity of impact they will start but they never finish something eventually destroys them if it's in ministry there will be one trouble somewhere some trouble some scandal some something that tears them down if he's a businessman one trouble in one day he can turn from grass to grace so you find out that when those people achieve things they can't celebrate it because they suspect that the story is not over and they are right once that altar gives an instruction even if it's after 30 years you will crash like rain coming upon the ground the heart at the point of writing their final exams when counseling them they will tell you after conducting tutorials for others they just blanked out like that until everything was done it was as if they came back what happened to me there is a speaking an instruction was given in the spirit like father like son like mother like daughter listen to what i'm saying because god sent me someone needs to be free this night Hallelujah. 
Now, these altars, how many of you know that what you call IT today, it was built based on the system of altars? It's a programming, it's an algorithm. How do you own your laptop? The laptop does not know you, but it knows instructions. When you press the power button to you, you call it a power button. But at the back end, there is an algorithm that makes the laptop behave a certain way if you press that button. Anybody that presses that button, it will obey. That's how it is in the spirit. Are we together? Isn't it amazing that technology has borrowed from the system of altars? They literally, without being there present, they can use algorithms to not just predict but explain things. It's been used today to create all kinds of things. Business is literally, the social media runs on this concept, altars. Hallelujah. Now, the problem is that if it is unfortunate for you, you can know what instruction was given in the realm of the spirit for your defeat by the patterns that happen. To others, it is not sickness, but they will never make it. It doesn't, if you try to help them and you are not powerful, that altar turns to you and fights you. Have you seen people like that? Now, this is where sometimes the prophetic makes a mistake. So they say certain things like, ah, you have this lady or this guy or this friend or this boss or this, um, um, employee brought bad luck they are not lying they are trying to explain that the people were innocent but they do not know that every time men come together they bring his altars that come together it's not just individuals when the devil wants to destroy you he looks for what is deficient based on the speakings of the altar fighting you and finds another person who has a speaking that will produce a double problem and bring both of you together. Now, you may not know what the confusion is about. Beyond men, men are conveyors of altars and these altars carry instructions. Are we together? Do you believe what I'm, I'm teaching you? This is very powerful. So you find out that there are certain altars that are like embargoes on people. You, you, you become part of a business the business starts going down and it's not a product I'm not, now listen 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 there is a place for lack of diligence and non-compliance to the laws of success are we together my discussion is with respect to the fact or based on the assumption that all other factors like diligence and hard work is in place are we blessed but the first prayer there is to not pray that they come is to pray that you become one who will now come to you and be a burden bearer when you are not one many of you have heard me say it by the grace of god mommy i made up my mind that outside of being a man of god my life's goal is to become a shoulder for people I am that one person who when you are crying I can be if I cannot clean your tears at least I can cry with you it is so comforting to have people in your life who are completely not needing your greatness oh what is wrong I was just told that I have cancer hey where is your faith and then next time you call them they say I'm busy no cancer then me too I have cancer we are dying here you know why I'm saying this so that God will grant us grace to coordinate our energy and not waste our time and our lives on people that at the end you think you have invested in pillars not known that you have invested in chaff hallelujah how many of you today God forbid but let's assume that as mommy is standing right now god forbid let's assume that her leg just starts paining her and she said how many of you can say mommy i will carry you on my shoulder don't be too quick to say me oh it's hard to be a burden bearer our daddy was sharing something that touched me sir you see why your message really touched me when he was talking about his mother do you know what it means to be paralyzed from neck down think of the, the 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 maintenance and yet for others they will leave. offense will not even let them preach christ again 
visible part to that tree that you do not see and that is what powers the tree are we together now so the health of the tree or the health of the root is reflected in what produces the kind of fruit the kind of um uh, you know good structure that you see on that tree he shall be like a tree that is planted so because of where it is planted and the nourishment it gets from it it will now become like a tree that is flourishing are we together now i said that to tell you that every altar evil altar now please look at me there is a central altar that powers every evil altar you need to know this there is a central altar that powers every evil altar that means it doesn't matter which family those evil altars are speaking from there is a central altar that powers those evil altars and it is called the altar of sin and iniquity the altar of sin and iniquity the altar of sin and iniquity and there are three levels of sin very quickly now number one there's personal sin personal sin shortcomings as an individual number two there are territorial sins it is not something committed by an individual but it is something that is territorial like Nineveh are we together now if you were Nineveh even if you were a baby you will still suffer are we together there are times that the concept of sin that attacks the people is not personal sin you can sin as a person if we say we have no sin the Bible says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us are we together but if we confess our sins the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness but there are territorial sins if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and heal their land there are territorial sins speakings and programmings not physical objects so when I say I have an altar that means that your speakings and your programmings are we together they have become consistent enough to create instructions in the realm of the spirit that are pro destiny pro kingdom are we together now yes if you tell me you have an altar meaning you build some stones it doesn't matter where you brought the stones from are we together there are so many things in my house I have a simulation of the Ark of Covenant it was given to me as a gift so you see the Ark of Covenant I don't worship it it's just there to remind me that we have come a long way walking with God are we together now if I'm eating bread and it falls on the Ark I'll carry it and keep eating it I'm not going to throw it away because it fell on uh, my ark of God. No, are you getting the point now? So it's beautiful. I like to see it. You know, it reminds me just, I have all these things around my house. Eagles representing this, lion representing this, but you don't worship it. The challenge is when you now build a monument and now come and stand kneeling down in front of it. Ah, you have gotten into idolatry. You are worshiping an unknown God. The throne of grace. The throne of grace the throne of grace the throne of grace there are many things that happen in the throne of grace one of it is the blood of jesus i think philippians 2 12. ye are come unto mount zion verse 12 he says um did i get that right hebrews chapter what now the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of abel find it for me please ye are come unto Mount Zion <laughs> the blood of sprinkling thank you unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels 23 to the general assembly the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven the judge of all the spirits of just men made perfect 24 yeah the and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling all found there that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel there are things that he speaks better than the blood of 
Abel. Now, please listen carefully. If you cannot access the throne of grace, there is no basis for powering any other authorization. The realm of the spirit only respects your speaking to the degree to which that speaking is connected to the throne of grace. The Bible says we come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need. To come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy. Mercy is found at the throne of grace and the grace to help in time of need is also found at the throne of grace. Are you learning so far? Now, listen carefully, please. But Father, I come to you by the blood, not in my righteousness, that every demonic installation that predated my existence, the Bible tells me I can bring forth my strong reason, and I come to the judge of all the earth. I come to the judge of all the earth. I come before the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things. Hitherto, these altars have been speaking negative things over my life, over my family, but I come by the blood and I invoke the blood, the blood upon altars. It doesn't matter what programming, I, it, it may not be your fault, it's not a cause to come from the family you came from, but you need to do something about it now before it tears your life into pieces. Let me tell you the truth, please look up. Insisting on you, insisting on you, insisting on you, insisting that you must carry that anointing, insisting that you must build that capacity, insisting a sacrifice of your life, a sacrifice of your life, building that capacity, building that formation, equipping you with the tools because you are going to be confronting altars altars older than you altars older than your grandparents altars older than your parents now the question is who is willing to give god a chance with your family give god a chance with your life to say lord like isaiah here am i send me make me then send me let my mother not die make me and then send me let my father not be destroyed my siblings may not be as spiritual but before they catch up i am available available this cause of poverty over this family i am available This cause of women not remaining in their husband's homes, men not remaining in their wife's home. This cause, this cause of untimely death, this cause of mysterious sicknesses, this cause of being a graduate and there's no job, no product, no matter what it is. Lord, I am available. I am available. I'm available. My intent is for every one of my family members to be saved and used by you. But you can start with me. You can start with me. King of glory, you can start with me. You can build me. You can make me. You can furnish me. I don't mind the fire. I don't mind the furnace of affliction. Let it make me like the porter and the clay. Build me until I become. Build me. Someone pray. Imagine a young man who forgets every instruction you give him. Oh, do this and he says, ah, I just forgot. How old are you? 22. You see, that, that is he's not a gifted person. He may be a sincere person. But it may not work that way. You need to trust God for gifted people gifted people in your life lord bring gifted people in my business bring gifted people in this ministry bring gifted people in my corporation bring gifted people everywhere when a nation has gifted people it will thrive when an institution has gifted people it will do well when a ministry has gifted people it will do well number four the fourth set of destiny helpers that you will need in your life they are called burden bearers these are trusted and faithful people who will stay with you through storms 
they will stay with you through challenges until your glory is revealed ruth chapter one please give us verse 16. no matter who you are in this life times will come and days will come storms will rise challenges will come individually corporately and so on and so forth you will need people in your life who can cry with you you will need people in your life who can rejoice with you you will need people in your life who are not using you as a ladder to achieve their purposes the bible says ruth remember the story of ruth and naomi and opa her sister her sister-in-law Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God my God. Let me tell you this. One of the most painful things for any leader is to get to a point where your life is shaken and find out that everybody you've labored for for decades and years were only looking for things to go look at jesus my question is when jesus was carrying the cross where were the people who ate the bread remember those people that ate the bread they even said we'll make you king the next day please be careful when people are clapping for you they are only clapping for their bread through you There are few people in their life who can covenant and say, if you are dying, I will die with you here. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Most leaders die of heart attack because of the sheer pain. Having in, they raise many people in their own homes. There are many of you here, as I'm talking to you, you have been in pain for years. You raise many people in your home. They didn't even know the difference between them and your children. And today, those people have the effrontery to start to stand and speak evil and speak ill. It can be painful. But there are a group of people sent by God. They come into your life not looking for your glory. They come into your life. The Bible says this man came and met David in the cave of Adullam. David was running away from Saul for his life. They would have met him and said, what a weak man. You call yourself a warrior. And yet they looked at him and they said, we will make sure you rise and become king over us. So even in that your state, we have taken you as king over us. How many people have run away from CEOs because their companies crashed? They were there to serve all oh, our great company and suddenly they hear that things are going down and they fold themselves and run in a heartbeat how many people serve men with power and authority hoping to rise and one day you hear that this man has has been diagnosed of an infirmity and they fold their hands and run away this has happened in politics this has happened in government this has happened in ministry this has happened in business this has even happened in family life but that god will surround your life with people today who you can sleep with both of your eyes closed because you trust that they are in your life to die with you they are not people who stand with you they are people who can die with you are we together because if you are lazy perpetually, even that act of perpetual laziness is sponsored by an altar. It's supposed to keep you non-productive for a reason. There are families, as soon as someone rises, everybody starts becoming sick. And the nature of the sickness is such that it will gob all the money. And until they get into debt, then something happens. Either the person dies, or many other people become sick once there is poverty nobody becomes poor once they don't have money or nobody becomes sick once there's no money but let a breakthrough just come it's like an alarm system in the spirit and things begin to happen some of you keep wondering why is it that it is when certain things happen it's like there's somebody watching me it is not somebody it's a law the law is precise it does not get tired don't allow ignorance destroy you and well 
Alléluia. Just when your boss wants to lift you, this altar strike again, and the devil uses your face to oppress the man. He wakes up in the morning because he does not have spiritual intelligence. He assumes it is you. He just comes to the office. Sad, you said I should meet you. Don't come to my office again. And you are wondering, what did I do wrong? My brother, it's not what you did wrong. It's what was there before your arrival. That if you do not understand and deal with, you will live a defeated. You can be jumping and say, I'm born again. You are right. But you see, activating your liberty is based on rules of engagement. Who is learning? You detect the presence of altars by the consistency of patterns. Consistency of negative patterns. I have seen people who either by their own making or because God brought them into a family where they enjoyed a covering, their lives began to speak such profound blessings. You would see that the woman is only cleaning. Her job, maybe she did not go to school. She's only a sweeper. But do you know, the day she's sweeping, that's the day a big man will pass and say, I, I like the way you are sweeping. I've been thinking of someone to bless among the sweepers. How many children do you have? Four. Send them to me. I want to sponsor them. And you see that happen. By the time you are angry and say, let's move out to another department. You move out to another department while she's scrubbing the toilet. The man who will help her comes to ease himself again. Is once you see consistency, this is what Jacob carried. Laban said, no, we switch this thing, the result is still the same. Because there are patterns. And it is a product of altars. Laban tried to cheat him. Laban tried to double up. It did not change anything. Because there is an instruction. They are taken for a prey and none say it, restore. Listen, let me tell you this. I don't want to bore you with history. I'm doing a, a summary. It's, it's paining me that I'm jumping so many important things. But I want to tell you this. You don't have to be bad or evil to be a victim of evil altars. For most people, they came into fraternity with dark powers in ignorance. They were sincerely looking for help like some of our great-grandfathers. They were not evil people. They needed their crops to be produced. They needed protection from wars. They had all kinds of diseases that would strike them and they would die. And there was no advancement in medicine. And the only way they knew was through priests and mediums. They would tell you that there's such a person. This whole community come into a covenant. The spirits will protect you. In return, your children, children, to the fourth generation will serve them and the innocent parents said fine it's a negotiation table the realm of the spirit witnessed it you were still in the womb of eternity when it happened but the realm of the spirit is precise like your phone number it will find you no matter where you go except you know how to rebuild an altar that secures you listen there are negative speakings and the instruction is that no child must bury their children. It is no parent must bury their children. It is children that, that bury their parents. So you get into a community, the oldest person is 45 because there is no length of days. You get into another family and the old people remain old but they never have children. Where are the children here? Something always happens and they just die. Do you know, if you don't have spiritual intelligence, if you like become a pastor, you stand on stage sincerely preaching Jesus with all your heart. Those altars don't care. The only thing that brings them down is light, not sentiments. Hallelujah. I have watched this thing destroy people. I've watched it destroy good people, good people, good people. Great grandmother was raped mysteriously and she loved the Lord. The mother did not hear the story and did not know the story. 
but as she grew up something happened maybe as a house held she was still raped again now the daughter third generation they are not even aware they've not discussed the story with one another the day they now discuss it they are all shocked different actors the same instruction the same instruction there are others who have destinies of kingdom financiers their great-grandparents were colleagues with those who are billionaires today it was in their prophetic destiny to be financial apostles but there was a speaking they will tell you that some of the before all this bank started my father was in the meeting and you are saying where's your father now he's dead why are we in poverty they will show you pictures of them and the founders of companies but there was an instruction never rise beyond a certain height listen i know what i'm saying if i'm cracking jokes with you i will crack jokes and we'll just laugh so you find people that when you speak with them you are asking but sir your issue is not laziness your issue is not lack of productivity why are you at this level because with the kind of value you have you should be at the presidency or you should be at un and they say my brother it's not only me my grandfather was a genius he graduated with first class my father was a this i have phd all my four children have phd but nobody can bring a decent meal I remember many years ago in Port Harcourt, I met a woman truly wrapping up her PhD. She was working as a security person because she had to make ends meet. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sit down. You can detect the presence of altars. I'm not scaring you. There is a way out. But I want you to think for one moment. The many things that have happened around your life. Mysterious, consistent evil programmings. Whether towards you, whether towards your family, whether towards those you know. And sometimes it becomes more embarrassing when you are a Christian. This is why you must learn to walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling the bible says there remained a rest for the people of god he's not talking about unbelievers but that even for the people of god there remained a rest look at me there are people and i don't i don't want you to get sad like i said don't take it personal how many of you know that there were people in this abuja when land was five hundred thousand? till today they don't own a house it was not carelessness something tied their hands they attended every seminar on real estate you know they even helped to facilitate it till today they don't have a house when houses when lands today that are hundreds of millions of naira were just less than one million and it's not that it was lack some of them even had breakthroughs doors were open five million ten million they cannot tell what they did with the money until today their children are begging you are passing a road and they'll tell you, you see this federal government road? It used to be land that I would have gotten at a platter of gold. What then happened? Light. There is therefore now no condemnation. Please pay attention now. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit please read verse 2 with me as loud as you can one two go one more time so paul is saying I have now experienced liberty, but that this liberty has dynamics, dynamics, dynamics. I'm seeing fire rising from the ground. I'm seeing fire rising from the ground. In the name of Jesus. Ah, tonight God is judging altars, judging altars. In the name of Jesus, I'm still fire rising, just like rising from the ground in the name of jesus let me speak already anyone who has been bound
by any satanic any demonic altar in the name of Jesus as you hear me speak now may those influences over your life give way forever give way forever give way forever please be seated are we together so the Bible says first three words Romans 8 2 for the law for the law the word law law there's an interesting word that I want us to consider it doesn't mean the principle it doesn't mean law like Old Testament the word law there is the word operation replace the word law there with operation then you understand it now for the operation of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the operation of sin and death you get you get it now so he's not just speaking of laws he's saying there is a programming that's another word for the programming of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had set me free from the programming so what put him in bondage programmings what brought him liberty programmings are we together there is an operation that leads to the experience of liberty there is another operation that leads to and keeps an individual perpetually in bondage now people are victims of programmings people are victims of not just circumstances but programmings there are laws Paul is saying the law of the spirit. Are you seeing that he had to use another law to replace another law, another operation? There was an operation called the law of the spirit of sin and death. But that for you to experience liberty, they had to bring another law called the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. And that is what set me free. Now, I've told you that evil altars and all demonic altars can be pulled down. This is something you need to know. All evil altars can be pulled down. And all righteous altars can be set up in place of those evil altars. So know that for a fact. That no matter how long an evil altar is, it can be torn down, it can be pulled down. Even tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ now write this down please altars walk by speaking instructions in the spirit that must manifest in your life if allowed altars walk by speaking instructions that means every altar has a voice altars walk by speaking instructions in the spirit that must manifest in your life if allowed they walk by speaking instructions they program instructions in the realm of the spirit those instructions are executed by spirits executed by men executed by systems and structures for their final delivery to your life good or bad tearing down altars now I taught you something that I want to quickly recap so that you understand. There is something called the reflection principle in theology. Please look at me. They call it the reflection principle. That means everything happens because of something it submits to. Are we together now? So the moon shines because it submits to the light and the glory of the sun. Are we together? When you see a tree grow, spring forth, and is producing fruit, there is still an in Joseph of Arimathea carried that cross. And he says, I may not die for the world, but I can help you. God has brought a few of these people in my life. And I can tell you, it's a gift to have people. And I pray for you, may that burden bearer be your wife, oh, or may that burden bearer be your husband too. Because if they are not, 
no matter who you are, times will come in your life where your faith will be challenged. People have been betrayed by their business partners. They sat together, they ate together. Do you know, in my opinion, I believe that one of the best person to Jesus was Judas. Judas was not a wicked man. Judas was just a selfish man. He wanted to use Jesus to do business. Because at the end, it just that it backfired. Judas could not use the money to spend it. The people who were wicked that were forgotten to talk about were those who came for his crusades. They ate the bread. They saw the miracle. Where was Jairus' daughter when Jesus was on his way to? Where were all these people? Where was the woman at the well? And yet he was on his way to that lonely cross. Crucify him! Jesus was looking at him. Yes, you are seeing me crucify him. Let his blood be on our children. But you ate my bread. Crucify him. You think I liked you? I only heard that a celebrity was in town and I came to eat bread. Let me submit to you sincerely. Most of the people in your life are looking for their greatness through you. It doesn't mean they are bad. It's just the reality of living in today's world. And the day they find an option or they do not find you fit to provide that in a heartbeat knowing that already helps you to shield your heart to know who is worthy of your commitment because we make the mistake of investing our all in just everybody arbitrarily no save yourself that pain and find people who by the spirit are true burden bearers because there are don't get used to the disappointment and the betrayal and the pain caused by people in our sociological sphere and conclude that everybody is like that my goodness i have seen people in this life and i believe there are many of them in this church who have that dexterity they can say look i, I will stand i will stand with you we will cry together oh i just lost five family members and he's asking you all kinds of unwise questions I came from a background where my local assembly, my local church, they didn't really understand the things of the spirit so much. But if someone had a bereavement or something, in less than two hours, you will see a group of women singing choruses, some with rice on their head, some with whatever, marching, and they will sleep in that house sometimes for days, comforting the woman. But many of us today, we don't want to be associated with pain. When someone receives a promotion, we are there. But when someone is in a position of embarrassment, uh, I'm a bit busy. We always do not want to be associated with pain. Unfortunately, if you are not there with me at the place of pain, don't expect to be invited at my dinner table. This is the reason why when people rise, they shockingly go back to their memory and look. When I was crying, whose voice did I hear crying with me? And they said, if you cried with me, there are people today who have used their being burden bearers as a stream of income. That is the only thing keeping them today. The person they cried with and helped vowed and said, if God ever lifts me, you must eat bread from my table. We have to pray that this mandate we are talking about is only achieved through influence and that this dominion and influence has pillars when you see certain people rise in life it's not necessarily a measure of their competence it's not necessarily a measure of their personal intelligence but that some of these people have been wise enough to cry with great people before they became great. Do you know the prayer you have to pray? Father, lead me to cry with somebody who is about to be great tomorrow. I may not know now, but Lord, let my tears be part of the, his history. Please listen. 
Listen to me. This is a call for action. This is more than just a message. It is a call for action. You will be surprised that some of you can make up your mind and say, I may not have access to some of the influential people in this church, but I will write their name on my prayer altar. And every day as I lift my voice to God, I am saying, Lord, I'm praying for our uncle. I'm praying for... They may not see you, but the justice system of God will fish you out one day. Hallelujah. Do not rejoice when great people are in pain. It's not a testimony. Can you be there? Some of us today, our parents and loved ones are sick. We have not spoken to them in months because we think our mama is always demanding money. I agree, she would have killed you as a baby. The mere fact that she gave birth to you, you have an eternal debt towards her. This is why the heavens of many are closed though. It's not always just about demons and attacks. These are the systems of the kingdom. I heard a story that Miles Munro gave. One of his deacons who became a very strong man in church. This man was always beating and frustrating his wife. And then he would run to church. Or I think it was the other way around. The man hated God and all of that. He would beat the wife. The wife was in church. And the man hated church and hated pastors. And one day he reached out to her. And he said what's the problem and she said my husband hates church he hates pastors he hates everybody and he said why he said because i don't have time for him and everything is church and miles Munro looked at her and wrote a note he said go back home I said, sorry, sir, you are driving me from church. He said, go back home. Go and tell your husband that your pastor sent you back home to come and take care of you. Now, listen. So he went back, she went back home and told the man. And the man said, what did you say? Your pastor sent you to come back and attend to me. He first kept quiet. You know how men are. They won't talk what they are thinking. After a few days, now called and said, okay, uh, who did you say that your pastor is? And then she followed him to the church and sat at the back. And Dr. Munro came and greeted him and said, thank you, sir. And said, wow. Eventually, cut the long story short, he became a deacon in that church. Because he said, I wanted a pastor who could teach a woman not to neglect her responsibility in the name of spirituality. And now I found one. Now, that man at that point was a burden bearer. He was willing to lose his membership to make sure a man's home is restored. Can you go that far? Can your ego go that far? Can you sacrifice that much? There are times in your life that you will have to help even undeserving people because you are just being a burden bearer it may not happen always but one day you just have to close your eyes to say if i depend on your being responsible your wife will die of hunger so for the sake of your children even though you are not willing to hear still take has god spoken to anybody the hand of the lord is upon my life the wisdom for my days at work in me the priest putting fire upon the altar and the man gets to the place of business and finds out that in an extraordinary way god is helping you you frustrate satan when you create that prayer life the covenant of sacrifice is engaged by the sacrifice of your own life wholly loving the lord and serving the lord number two the covenant of consistent prayer as a lifestyle prayer points or not consistent word-based prayer and then number three giving the third way you engage the covenant of sacrifice is giving and giving is also threefold your time to serve god your energy to serve god and your resources to serve god unfortunately pastors seem to zoom down on the resource part i don't know why but greater than the money you want to be free from demonic covenants and rebuild an altar that speaks blessings. You must give your time. 
to serve God. I'll give you three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Father, if there is any legal basis upon which Satan will lay claim on my life, I advocate the blood right now. Please go ahead and pray. If there is any legal basis, if there is any legal basis, the psalmist said, if I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus. Take a minute to pray. Every legal basis. The sin of commission, the sin of omission. I obtain mercy by God. I obtain mercy by God. Sins of bloodline. I obtain mercy by God. Territorial sins. I obtain mercy from God. Open your mouth and pray with humility and brokenness. One minute. In Jesus' name. Now you're going to cry for grace to engage this covenant of sacrifice. Lord, grace to follow you wholly. Grace to commit to a life of prayer consistently. And grace to dedicate my time, energy and resources to serve you. Go ahead and pray. Grace. Obtain that 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 grace. Sapela kaparanta kapera ko sevra kete peleke pa. Shai gana malanta fraska bina katosi ya kafretis keti. Obtain that grace. In the name of Jesus, obtain that grace. Grace to follow the Lord wholly. Grace to follow the Lord wholly. Follow the Lord wholly. Grace to commit to a life of prayer. Speaking realities daily. Rewriting stories daily. Declaring my will daily. Making my contributions to the manifestations of God's word in my life daily. Obtain the giving grace. The grace to give God your time. The grace to give God your energy. The grace to give God your resources. Not by manipulation, by revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everyone here under the sound of my voice. Every altar speaking against your life. It doesn't matter what it is speaking. By the blood of the eternal covenant, those voices and the effects of their speaking come to end now. Those speakings of the altars come to end now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let a new altar speak righteousness, speak favor, speak blessings, speak advancement, speak restoration, speak increase, speak new levels, speak advancement, speak multiplication. In the name of Jesus, everywhere the altar has spoken death, I speak life. Everywhere the altar has spoken poverty, I speak increase. Everywhere the altar has spoken curses, be blessed. Everywhere the altar has spoken delay, I declare go forward. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you have been stagnated in life and destiny, 
as a result of this prophetic declaration let your wilderness become a fruitful field let your wilderness become a fruitful field and let your fruitful field become a forest in the name of Jesus someone shout it say I am free one more time say I am free for the last time say I am free give Jesus a big hand clap celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in Jesus name someone will insult his CEO insult his boss go and sit down and tear him down and yet be praying secretly for the same company you want to have the same cooperation you have already killed the door for reproducing that same result men of influence when God taught me this I developed a healthy respect for successful people oh apostle Joshua Selman he's just lucky just a young man that God is using In every generation God raises people you think like that and see whether God I will not criticize you but I will never prophesy to you brothers and sisters from this place make up your mind make up your mind some of them are even your parents they gave you a leverage you never would have gotten and yet we are the first to criticize them they were not serious Christians they, yes I agree but with what they know they made sure you didn't live a very bad life have you gone to honor them and bless them these are the systems of greatness number three the third group of people you will need in your life are gifted people there are times you need more than divine connectors the men of influence will give you access to their wings and the leverage of their credibility but you need gifted people those who can get the job done the best corporations in the world have mastered this they will pay the price to get the gifted people and triple their salary instead of wasting their resources on different people who continue to become leakages to their profits gifted people sometimes you just need people in your life that can get the job done sincere people are wonderful but it takes more than sincerity to produce results some of us our lives are full of many sincere people they will never destroy you but you are also not moving forward you need to trust God for gifted people in your company gifted people your workers gifted people your staff gifted people skillful and talented people they use their gifts their skill their talents to help you achieve God's purposes it's important there have been people even in business and in life they may not be exceptionally smart as individuals but they are surrounded by phenomenal people and I pray that in the name of Jesus especially for every man in this church that God will surround you with gifted people their job is to make our work easy